So I recently uh, took apart this cheap ass air purifier. Um, it's one of your typical, um, you know, uh, infomercial type air purifiers. That uh, you know, it's got all of your uh, your typical gizmos and gadgets in it. Um, let me plug this in so I can show you the control panel. So it's got your uh, your typical uh, negative ion generator built in. Uh, you know, some manufacturers call it anion or anion, whatever, however you want to pronounce that. Um, and it's also got uh, an ozone generator and ultraviolet. Uh, sterilizing lamp, uh, sanitary lamp, in there. Um, so yeah, all of your uh, your typical gimmicks. Uh, the thing that, uh, and I, I got this for about seven dollars from a thrift store, secondhand store. So uh, mostly just to play around with it, you know, see what was in it. Uh, let me show you this. This is interesting. So. We've got this intake vent over here on this side, right? So if you open this up, you can see you've got your primary filter, you know, your first stage uh, coarse filter, right? As in any air purifier. Uh, however, <laughs> there's nowhere for that air to go. <laughs> that cracked me up a whole lot when I opened this, <laughs> when I opened this side and saw that it was basically useless. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, the other side, however... Um, there's a, an identical filter. Uh, this side does have uh, airflow through it, and uh, uh, it's not an actual HEPA filter. It's what they call HEPA-like or HEPA-type, HEPA-type filter. Um, it's similar to a HEPA filter, but um, by calling it HEPA-type, and not HEPA, they're able to cut costs on the filtering medium and, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't do as well a job. It'll probably do okay, but it doesn't do as good a job as a real HEPA, uh, an actual uh, uh, HEPA filter that's held to HEPA standards. Um, but they're able to uh, bank off the uh, HEPA marketing, uh, you know, the consumer uh, recognition of that of that name. So, but uh, I've taken it out. But there was uh, a UV lamp here. Uh, this was in there, and uh, that's gonna theoretically kill any bacteria uh, that flows through uh, into the unit. And then uh, there is a negative ion generator uh, that supposedly uh, makes uh, filters out dust. Um, these, these type filters though, there are these type air cleaners, um, they don't have uh, a charging plate and a collecting plate, uh, which is the best way to use ionization to capture dust particles. Uh, what they do is essentially uh, there's um, a set of brushes, these little 
electrodes, little brush electrodes that uh, ionizes the air as it passes through the the output, uh, the outlet duct. Um, and instead of negatively ionizing that and then positively collecting it on a collection plate that would need to be cleaned, what that effectively, effectively does is negatively ionizes the air and then uh, the, the dust particles within that then stick to surfaces in the room. So it does effectively remove some dust from the air, but it creates um, you know, a, a film of deposits on every surface in the room. So basically what I've done is taken all the fun toys out of this little high voltage uh, ozone generator and uh, uh, ionizer and put it back together as just a regular HEPA type uh, filter so that I can at least uh, you know I, I had a uh, now I've got a super duper cheap um, HEPA style uh, air cleaner for uh, just about seven dollars uh, plus a whole lot of neat toys for example Here's the uh, ozone generator, um, and there was a, a ceramic uh, electrode that uh, this was hooked up to, um, and it basically made a uh, um, about an inch long. Uh, Corona that uh, generates ozone. Um, unfortunately, uh, this lists the input voltage uh, as 12 volts DC, but it doesn't list, uh, it doesn't specify the current that it draws, uh, nor does it specify the output voltage. Um, just by doing some research online, I've determine that this is probably, uh, it puts out probably about uh, 3.5 kV, so about 3,500 volts uh, DC. Um, it does list the ozone consistency, which is 50 milligrams per hour. <laughs> that means absolutely nothing to me, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've hooked it up to, uh, even though it runs 12 volts, uh, built for 12 volts. I've hooked it up to uh, two 9 volt batteries in series. Um, you know, give it roughly 18 volts, uh, which is, I'm sure, well within its uh, nominal tolerances. Alright, uh, but yeah, this is pretty fun to play with. So I've hooked up these two 9-volt uh, batteries there in series. Turn off the flash so you can uh, see this. It's really high pitched. I don't know if that's going to uh, come out on the video or not. But it sure does catch the attention of the dogs. <laughs> smell the ozone there. Oh, I've caught the uh, tip of the insulation on that wire. 
But yeah, this is kind of interesting because uh, since it is such a high voltage and low current, uh, you can really play around with the effects of high voltage. Uh, for example, here you can see the corona going through the insulation of the other wire. Here's the uh, UV bulb that I talked about a minute ago. You can see the corona forming there. It's pretty cool. It's hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> oh, computer doesn't like that interference. <laughs> you can hear that in the speakers. You can hear the static there. It's a lot of uh, RF interference. It's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, I'm done, computer. <laughs> I'll leave you alone with the RF interference. No worries. <laughs>